from the capital of the world, Washington, D.C., the United States of America, the Bible Way Temple presents the Bible Way of Living. Throngs of excited worshipers are pressing their way to the Bible Way Temple to be edified, encouraged, and exalted to receive their soul's vitamins in another unique spiritual experience, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. On today's program, you will hear the Bible Way Television Choir sing, and you will be inspired by audience participations of selected readings from the Pray the Bible Way prayer booklet. And as always, you'll be challenged from the Bible, the Word of God, with words of comfort and assurance from Bishop Smallwoody Williams, founder and pastor of the Bible Way Temple and presiding bishop of the Bible Way Churches worldwide. Beginning with this program, Bishop Williams will commence with a series from the book of Acts. Write the address on your screen, The Bible Way of Living for the Way. And upon your request, you will receive your copy of The Way, a booklet on the book of Acts. We welcome you to The Bible Way of Living. and We sincerely hope that this broadcast will reach you spiritually, mentally, and physically as you see and hear. Our program is designed to strengthen you in the inner man and to encourage you through life's daily challenge. To help you, this 64-page prayer booklet for the last 30 years has been a source of inspiration to countless thousands. I would like for you to turn with me to page 12 in your Pray the Bible Way prayer booklet. Page 12, the prayer of blessing. We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, we give thanks, o Lord Almighty who giveth food to all flesh, who food to all flesh having all sufficiency in all things. All in all things. Jesus, said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Lord evermore give us this bread, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. For, he the soul, for he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness, and the soul with goodness. unto thee O God do we give thanks for the living bread which came down from heaven for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. And all the people say, Amen. Our prayer thing. Lift our hands as unto the Lord. you to bow your heads close your eyes if you have a special request for prayer place your hand over your heart if there's a pain or misery within your body place the other hand where the pain or misery is father in the precious name of Jesus Christ the name that is above every name that at the name Jesus every knee must bow every tongue confess 
that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. It's in that mighty name of Jesus that we come boldly to the throne of grace. Lord, you said we can ask anything in your name. You said we can seek and we shall find. You said we can knock and it shall be opened. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, move in the midst of this congregation. Move in the midst of everybody under the sound of my voice. Work that miracle on their job. Work that miracle in their home. Work that miracle in their body. Somebody's sick right now. They need a touch from the master. Somebody's heavy burden right now. They need you to uplift their heavy burden. Have your own way, Lord God. Any way you want to move, Lord, it's all right. Any way you want to bless, Lord, it's all right. Any way you want want to touch Lord it's all right save somebody deliver somebody and we'll worship you we'll praise you we'll give your name the praise in Jesus name we pray and all the people say Amen. you may be seated once again we glorify the Lord and praise the Lord here at the Bible way temple we're so thankful to God that we have a music ministry we believe that the Word of God can not only be promoted by preaching and by teaching but we're so thankful to God that the Word of God can be promoted by the singing of the song so at this time the Bible way television choir will come to you with the selection delivered
affords me the greatest of pleasures at this time. Present our pastor, a mighty man of God, one who can preach the full gospel, one who knows how to share the bread of life with us. We thank and praise the Lord for such a man as this, a man of blessing, a man of power, with a message of blessing and power. Our pastor, Bishop Smallwood E. Williams. Anybody that's in having trouble in walking through the storm or the dark, I know you're in the spirit, and I pray for you because I realize that there's enough trouble to go around everywhere. Nobody should rejoice at another person's trouble because it's enough to knock at your door one day. And when you walk through the storm, keep your head high. Don't be afraid of the dark, because Jesus may seem sometime to be in the dark in your life, but he's never at a distance. Well, he said, Lord, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. I want to thank Pearl. If she gets through singing like that, I don't even have to preach. <laughs> really did a sermon in song. And God put that on my heart because it was unplanned and unrehearsed. And I am led by the Spirit of God. And I love everybody. Nobody in the world that I hate. No, what Jesus said, love your enemies. Of course, I know you have to pray mighty hard to love some people. But pray hard and love them anyhow. Sometimes you have to kind of hold your nose to love some people, but love them anyhow. God bless your hearts. And so we are so grateful to God because that's what this is all about. That's what the Bible Way Church stands for, to help those that need help, to strengthen those that need strength. But Jesus said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn to be. I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest until you will be so. I thank God for the miracles and for the wonders of God. Bang me down through the years. Fifty-nine years I've been pastoring this congregation. I'm happy. And I'm still on the way may not be able to run fast as I used to, but I can still run through truths. And I can leap over some walls in the name of Jesus. And I have a message that God has given me. And this television series will be taken from the book of Acts of the Apostles. And this morning, from the second chapter of Acts, and uh, that very, very profound 40th verse. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. The words of St. Peter in his red sermon on the day of Pentecost. And uh, the series of sermons that God had given me, God directed to me to that book. And I'm going to pound away, the Lord willing, message after message from the book of Acts because it's a very, very important book because it is, uh, exercises such, as it were, inspiring, and such illuminating vision on your life. And it's just as relevant today in the 20th century as it was in that day in the first century because the prophetic structure of the universe is so built that the Word of God is able to help this generation just like it helped that generation. And of all people and of all generations, we need God as never before. Now, the writer of that book of Acts, of course, is Dr. Luke, the very beloved 
physician. And it's not only the book of Acts, it's not only the Acts of the Apostles, but it is also a book of the Acts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is spoken of over 50 times in the book of Acts. And so, you know, they were working together, God and man. The book of the Apostles, and the Apostles was getting orders from headquarters on high. God telling them what to do and what to say in the midst of a day and an age when it seemed that society and the social order of that day was out of order, just like the social order of our day is out of order. And the Greco-Roman civilization, which is the highest civilization that man had ever reached, it had, was becoming unglued and coming loose at the scene. And everybody was confused because of the disarrangement of their society. And we find ourselves in a similar condition today. But just at that time, God interposed. And he sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost as a rushing mighty wind. And you know, God had me praying on the Sunday here. The Holy Ghost was so manifest in itself. And the presence of God was so mighty in our midst. And I thought about Jesus said to Dr. Nicodemus, who was ashamed, no doubt, to come to Jesus by day. So he came to him by night to have a conference and said, Good Master, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And he began to speak, complimenting Jesus, very polite. We know that thou art a teacher come from God because no man to do the things that thou doest, except God be with him. And then Jesus went on and said to him, Ye must be born again. Nicodemus wondered, said, How can these things be? Although he was a doctor of philosophy and Jewish in the Hebrew religion. And Jesus said, Marvel not that I say to you, Ye must be born again. Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he's old? And enter again to the prenatal state into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, no. Says so it's just like this. You hear the wind blow, and you can't tell from whence it comes, nor whence it goes. And so is every man that is born of the Spirit of God. He said, except a man is born again of water and of the Spirit, he cannot inherit eternal life. The wind bloweth where it listeth, you hear the sound thereof, you can't tell from whence it come or whence it goes. And God had me preaching on the Sunday morning as the power of God came down in this great sanctuary. And I looked up to God, and the extemporaneous prayer broke out of my mouth, saying, Blow, wind of God, blow! And on the day of Pentecost, when it had fully come, there came a sound from heaven, like a rushing mighty wind. Filled all the house wherein they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, other languages, as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. What they felt, what they were feeling, and what they were experiencing was greater than what their mind could describe, and their own vernacular, and their own language and the Holy Ghost, Hatton's language, took over, and they began to speak the wonders of God, and the people were amazed that heard them, for this group, the 120, were, as it were, Galileans. But God blessed and poured out his Spirit upon them. And the Holy Ghost had me said, Blow, wind of God, oh, blow. I tell you, as God's Spirit began to come through here like a refreshing breeze, even beyond that of the air conditioner that we have, air conditioned throughout this great sanctuary. And the wind of God began to blow. And honey, when God's wind began to blow on you, I don't care how hot and how feverish and you may be in contending and striving with the problems of life. It's cool. It's a cool, refreshing breeze that blows on the soul. You don't have to take a fan and fan you feel it? Hallelujah. But you can just let God have his way. And whenever you pray, just let him have his way. And he will fix it for you. So I found myself praying, blow, 
wind of God blow and God's wind is blowing in the sanctuary, refreshing and filling our souls, causing us to rejoice in the Lord God of our salvation. I don't care how much intellect, and I love intellect and learning, thank God, but without the Spirit of God, over 50 times the Holy Ghost, of course, he, the, the book of Acts usually refer to it as the Holy Ghost. People today are so refined until they don't want you to say the Holy Ghost. They say, say Holy Spirit. But I said the Holy Ghost. I love to say, let me hear Problem in your life, take it to Jesus. Take it to Jesus. Seems like nothing ever turned out right. Take it to Jesus. Take it to Jesus. You see, I've tried it for myself, and I don't need nobody else. Jesus will make everything, yeah. continuously through this great temple. And I join with the psalmist. You read these words high up over the nave, up over the choir of this temple. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. 
I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. What for? To behold and what else? And Let's give God a hand. Well, thank the Lord. This is a wonderful way to start the new year. New first Sunday. The new year. John the Revelator said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Thank you, Jake. so beautiful to go forth in worship and in praises in worship and in praises and in adoration a shout and a clap unto the Lord the 47th Psalm said clap your hands all ye people the Psalm is what he was talking about Applauding the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Rejoicing in the Lord God of our salvation. Honey, this is beautiful. Money can't buy what you feel and what you're inspired by. Silver and gold cannot pay for that. It's the gift of God and it's eternal life. I tell you, I'd rather to be here than anywhere. Right here. Hallelujah. The heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God shall stand forever. And I'm rejoicing. And I thank God for you and our preaching and our teaching. And leadership has not been in vain, but it's been to the glory of God. Whether you are perfect this morning or not, we thank God that you're on your way to perfection. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're on our way. We know where the goalposts are. Now, so many people don't even know where the goalposts of the true values of life are. Hallelujah. They don't know where the goalposts are. And you're in trouble when you're playing a game and don't even know where the goalposts are. I thank God that we know where the goalposts are. And we are pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's the goalpost. And that's the reason the tears run you down your face sometimes. But you press on in the hand. With an aching heart, sometimes a painful body, you press on in it. You know the best is yet to be. Hallelujah. It hasn't been, it's been mighty nice, but the best, the best, is yet to be. And this is a part of it. Hallelujah. As the football coach said to George Allen, he used to say the present, the future is now. Amen. The future is now. The best is also yet to be, I say. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this work be of men, it will come to know. Amen. See, time is a, will tell. Amen. You don't have to try to outrun anybody. You don't have to try to outdo anybody. Amen. Just keep on marching on. For God's truth is marching on. Hallelujah. Well, this counsel, this work be of men, it will come to know. Listen, but if. It be of God, you cannot overthrow it. I don't care how many lies you tell. I don't care how hard you fight. I don't care how you may hate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
You may hinder me, but you can't stop me. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. That's the reason the Bible, we church is standing. This year, we will celebrate the Lord willing our 60th anniversary as pastor of this church because the fact, amen, that if it be of God, you can't overthrow it. The wind can blow, the storm can rage, but you can't overthrow it. I'm the first preacher back for the Holy Ghost preacher to have the permission of the government to marry anybody in Washington. When I came here, I couldn't marry a soul. Even the, in this uh, District of Columbia and Columbus, I had my state license and my county license and all that. But here in Washington, no Pentecostal Holy Ghost preacher could marry anybody. Amen. We had to get other denominations, Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, any, but you, and when I went down there, they threw the same thing at me. Just 20 years old, 1927. My few members, if they wanted to marry, I wanted the position like anybody else to marry them. They called the First Amendment rights, constitutional freedom of worship. I went on down there, and they said, well, you've got to have somebody of your religion to sign for you before you can get permission to marry anybody. I said, I haven't got anybody of my religion here that's already signed up to sign for me. So it's got to be a first, and I'm the first. I'm here. Amen. Oh, God, that's Dr. Pruitt, Bishop Pruitt. <laughs> Bless your heart. This great preacher from Africa and America. <laughs> Amy. Now, so I said to them, I, 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 I'm the first, amen, and I want to say, well, if you were Methodist or Baptist or somebody like Bishop Pruitt's uh, congregation, amen, you could, you could marry Pruitt with me. <laughs> Thank God. So I said, I said, well, I pulled out my credentials from the state of Ohio. I pulled out my credentials, the youngest preacher ever to be an ordained in the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ when I was 18 years old. I pulled that out. I went on back in and brought out my charter that Bishop Lawson had issued me to organize a church here. Thank God. And then I wrote a letter. I didn't have any typewriters in those days, no secretaries. So I wrote it myself. I told my members, I had 20 members, I said, sign this. And they signed it. And I went on down there and left it with the secretary. And she said, I'll turn it over to the judge. And when she come tell me about it, it couldn't be uh, because we were not registered all right. I said to her, I said, you're discriminating, are you? I wasn't but 20 years old, but I've been a fighter all my life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now listen, and when I went back there that Wednesday, they had my credentials. George Stafford said, had my credentials. And I signed. And here come all the other Pentecostals and holiness and uh, apostolics, and I signed theirs. And then they be signed the others, and some of them don't even have enough sense to remember that I did that. But I did it just to say, and God will reward me someday. There stood by me this night, while we are sitting in this building now, in this great temple, one of the largest churches in Washington because God stood by me and he stood by you. When that highway showed me the, the, the department, that, that uh, as it were, the plans and the drawing and the configuration of the highway. What is that, 95? 395 International Highway. Not just a local road through Washington, but that's federal, honey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I hadn't knew that God would stand by me, I would have given up. What is a preacher? Amen. No elected official. No money. Just God. Hallelujah. And all the money that I need, he supplies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But money couldn't do this. But the Lord stood by me. It's not a demon in hell or any of his brothers or his neighbors or anybody, his relative, can stop you if you really got your hand in God. The Lord will stand by you in the darkest of the hour, in the darkest night, and all around your Savior's way, he will be your help and stay. 
Therefore you fear no evil. Hallelujah. David said, when my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. God will trip the devil up on your job. I don't care whether he's your supervisor or whether he's your boss or whether he's a member of the Senate or a member of the House or whether he's a member of the Cabinet or whether he's the President of the USA. Amen. God can trip us up if we bother a child of God. Because it is better for one to have a stone tied around about his neck and cast it into the bottom of the sea than to fend one of the little ones. Not a big one, just a little child of God. You're in trouble. It's not because of who they are, but to whom they belong. You see, that's the reason God will fight for when, you, when they touch you, you touch him. You touch the apple of his eye because you're his. You can't get to me without getting to God. And you cannot do any more to me than what God permits you to do. And then whatever God permits you to do, God is going to give me strength to bear. For he said that he would not put any more upon none of us than we're able to bear. I'm Bishop Smallwood E. Williams, founder and pastor of the Magnificent Bible Way Temple. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity to share with you the blessings of the Lord and to say that we are on our way to heaven and enjoying the trip, having a wonderful time serving the Lord in this blessed, bountiful, beautiful Bible way. And I want to give you to understand that the Bible way of living is not just another denomination, congregation, or organization, but the Bible way is a way of life and living in harmony with the word of the Lord, rightly divided. And to that end, we take pleasure in sharing with you. I plan to preach from the book of Acts on this entire television series of sermons. I think it's time that perhaps I should say that there's, we should rediscover the book of Acts and its relevancy to this generation. Yes, it was relevant to the people of the first century. It is relevant to society and to our social order in the 20th century. The cry is still going up from all over the world as they had on the day of Pentecost. Men and brethren, what shall we do or what must we do? And the answer is still the same and we find it in the book of Acts. Not only it is the book of Acts of the Apostles, but it's also the book of action of the Holy Spirit. For more than 50 times, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is referred to because of the relevancy of this message. May God bless you. Write to me, Bishop Smallwood E. Williams, The Bible Way of Living, 1100 New Jersey Avenue in the city of Washington, D.C., USA, zip code 2000. One, may God ever bless you and keep you and smile upon you. In his name, God bless you. Believe in God. It's the prayer of faith that will heal you. It's the prayer of faith that will deliver you. It's the prayer of faith that makes the way out of nowhere. It's the prayer of faith and will open doors that seemingly aren't there. Those of you who are standing at the crossroads and don't know which way to turn. Those of you who are standing there and the doors seem to be shut. Jesus Christ said, I am the door. Jesus Christ said, I'm the way. He's the way out of anything that the enemy has you in. He's the way out of your bondage. So immediately following the prayer, we want you to praise God. If you want to be baptized, immediately follow in the prayer. See one of the ministers up here. See one of the elders or one of the deacons up here. And let your request be made known unto them. They will prepare you for baptism. If you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, see one of the elders up here. They'll show you and they'll give you over into somebody that will minister unto you. Thank you for joining us for our 94th church anniversary on the birthday of our founder, 
Apostle Smallwoody Williams. We pray that this broadcast has been a blessing to you. If you desire to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, call the Bible Way Church 202-789-0700. We'll explain to you the plan of salvation according to Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We leave with you this final song, God Said He Will Be With Me. Once again, we glorify the Lord and praise the Lord. And at this time, the Bible Way Temple Choir will be coming with a selection, God Said He Be With Me. Sister Norris Grant is the soloist.
he said it'd be with me. God said it would be. God told me to go. Just go. He said go. Just go. He said go, church. Just go. Oh, and he go with me. Well, I'm, I'm the Lord, thy God, and I'll God be with him. He said it'd be with me. God said it would be with me. In trials and tribulations. Tell him 